Before we start this video, I want to give a shout out. Actually, I'm giving you some uh, some spoilers here. I shouldn't be doing this in the garage, but uh, I want to give a shout out to a man that named Pete from Rednecks and Dirty Hands on YouTube. Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands, I'm Pete. Not long ago I found Pete's channel on YouTube and then I ended up talking with some friends about it and they had started watching his videos too and uh, I just felt like he was a cool dude so I reached out to him and uh, we talked on the phone for a bit, we've talked through Messenger a little bit. He's a real cool dude, he's up there in Ontario where uh, you know the snow is a little bit thicker and uh, people a little bit uh, hairier and it's a little bit colder. So I want to give him a shout out, I want you guys to do me a huge favor, do him a huge favor because he is a really good dude and uh, we gotta support each other, we gotta support uh, the snowmobile community, we gotta make snowmobile great again and Pete does a lot of, he does a lot of stuff with uh, four wheelers, he does a lot of stuff side by side, he's always working on things, building things, tinkering on things and he does a lot with sleds too and uh, he's just my kind of dude, you know, he's just down to earth dude, working on things, having fun and I want you guys to support him, I don't even care if you skip this video and you go over to his channel and subscribe, we need to help each other out. That's what this world needs right now in every sort of way. I'd rather see him blow up than myself. So uh, go over there and uh, we'll start this video if you're still watching and enjoy. All right, I'm gonna take a quick solo ride. My uh, nephew's here, that's who that is. I wanna hang out with him too, so. <laughs> wow, it feels so good to be back on the sled. I'm telling you guys, this thing rips. Real good. Real good, real fast. Where am I going? Right across the river. but this thing is a uh, 600 chassis with a 700 slapped into it. It's got a full dyno port exhaust on it. Sounds great, runs real great. Wow, <laughs> oh, this thing makes me happy. What does she carve? Let's see that. Chassis are so easy to carve like that. <laughs> I really miss this with my 700. River's looking pretty decent. This actually carves a, a lot tighter. Huh? Yep. <laughs> carves a lot tighter than my old 700 track on it. Chainsaw, it's a pretty thick boy, too. I can't tell you how long it's been since I've been riding on the family farm here. Feels good, my friends. saying go back to the family farm and ride so that's what we're doing today drop me down in the comments if you want to see more uh, farm videos the deer's been nesting over there Say the Z 
GX chassis. These sleds, this one in particular, 2001, 2000, 2002-ish. Those are the best sleds, man. This is the kind of sled I grew up on. And of course the OG snowmobile that started this channel was the 2002 MXZ 700, which is pretty much the same exact thing, except this is a 2000. But I'm going to go on a limb and say, these are the best slits. Oh man, it's so good to be back on a sled and ripping around. I like this sled more than my assault, you believe that? I'm a big fan of the old sleds, like, I don't know what to tell you. I know a lot of you guys are too, you just, you, you can't forget about these old sleds. These are the ones that paved the way for the newer ones. Before we had uh, rider forward style snowmobiles, we had these. told you guys, or I don't know if I did or not, but I traded the 2002 Articat ZR800 that we bought when we were snowmobile shopping. So I got online, I talked to my people, and I got a guy that wanted to trade me this beautiful thing right here. So this is a 2000 MXZ 600 that somebody dropped a 700 motor in. So technically it's a 700. It's got a pretty mint track on it. Uh, I got a few cosmetic stuff. Uh, no big deal. Full Dynaport exhaust, which is badass. Somebody took the air box out. Uh, it's got reverse too, which is nice. And overall, this thing is pretty friggin' mint. But before you guys crucify me down in the comments, you have to know that Artcat ZR had a lot of problems, right? I actually made a list right here. Here's what was wrong with it. <clears throat> After tearing into this thing and spending hours, I'm gonna show you pictures on the screen as I'm saying these things. Primary clutch was just destroyed and could have exploded literally at any moment. The ramp was rolling at an angle causing binding. The secondary clutch was so welded together from rust that it required the belly pan to be removed just to get to it. And even then, sitting overnight in uh, penetrating oil, still didn't do the trick. That thing was seized right on there. Not to mention a crack in the secondary as well. Both V-Force reed boots were torn open sucking air. Coolant temp sensor was broken and two idler wheels that needed bearings. Okay, so parts for that thing were absolutely astronomical. We're talking just just in parts at least 600 bucks 500 bucks 600 bucks something like that plus all the time to go through all that the guy i traded for this bad boy right here he knew every single bit of that information that i just shared with you and he wanted to trade me for this thing here he said he's always wanted a zr800 so he got one i'm curious to see down in the comments if you think there's gonna be a lot of you articat guys i know that but if you think trading that articat zr for this thing was a good deal hey we're gonna get back to ripping because i'm just having a blast out here <laughs> seen it before. I cannot believe 
how fast this thing is. Maybe it's just because I'm not used to it anymore, but this thing rips. It must be clutched. It's gotta be. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. I think I uh, got a flat tire or something. Here's something clunking back there. Just pulled over. Luckily, we're at an actual tire place. Let's go see what happened here. Oh, yeah. We got a flat. It's friggin' smoking. Looks like the rim's okay, so I might have to hang out here and see if this tire place has a uh, tire for me. Unfortunately, Vermont Tire is closed. Mm. So I texted my buddy Sam, who has a trailer just like this. He's going out in the snowbank and taking it off his trailer, and he's going to bring it down to me. Until then, I'm going to eat my jumbo sandwich that I bought for $9, so I don't starve out here in the wilderness. My hero! If I had a nickel every time you rescued me, I'd buy a new trailer. Dude, look at your hair! Mike can't be the only one around here with beautiful hair. <laughs> He's blowing. The other side has a brand new rim and a brand new tire, but we failed to do you this ran one. ran out of money? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, bastard. That tire is bigger than the one I got. But... No. Wow, the tire. It'll still do. Yeah. If it's a five lug, it should fit. Hey, yours is not all weather cracked. That won't do. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. should be. <laughs> it should, it should do just fine. <laughs> Broke down in the yard of a tire warehouse, but yet I still have to come down. Moment of truth here. I'll trade you. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> throw it in my pile of junk here. Dude, I can't thank you enough. We're back in business.